Welcome to the Coops Game Show. This is part two of my top games video. This time it's my top 12 PC games from 2003 to 2012. I'm doing this in chronological order. So the first game I want to talk about is Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. I love this game and this is the original CD release. I think it also came out in a big box and this is this is in the big box. Then this is the DVD version, which also includes the sequel. And I picked this up in Akihabara, Japan. My friend helped me find it. I think there was other DVD releases. I love this game so much, I also own it on Steam. This is a Star Wars RPG that was awesome, and we'll go into it and then look at the rest of my top games. In my previous video, I had them all on display. This time they're hidden. And then you'll see in the video what are my top 12 PC games from 2003 to 2012. Stay tuned on Coop's Game Show. I'm not sure if Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic was the first Star Wars RPG, but it's a dang good one. It was developed by Bioware, who were known for the Baldur's Gate and Neverwinter Nights series, and are now known for the Mass Effect series. It takes place 4,000 years before the movies. This game has an excellent story that has some interesting plot twists, and was consistent with the Star Wars universe, and the whole feel of the game was. And it was one of the first games I remember playing that presented the player with a choice to be good or evil. And having that amount of choice was really cool. It has the same basic combat system from earlier Bioware games, where you could pause the combat to make your next action. Having just played Jedi Knight 2, I wish the combat was a lot faster when I was a kid. I clicked really frantically, wishing it would go faster. Maybe I have more patience as an adult. Even if you're not the biggest fan of the Star Wars universe, I still recommend checking out Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. It's one of the best single player RPGs I've ever played. In my previous video, I mentioned that Warcraft 3 was one of my favorite games of 2002. Well, its expansion, The Frozen Throne, is one of my favorite PC games of 2003. In The Frozen Throne, we are introduced to some new races, like the Blood Elves and the Naga. And my favorite race in this game has always been the undead, I just really liked playing as them. <laughs> in this game we're introduced to a new Barak, the beetle guy as I call him. And the beetle guy is just so badass. The scourge will devour all. Illidan the demon hunter is a major character in this game. As the night elves you're hunting him, as the blood elves you're protecting him, and then as the undead you fight him in the end. You also get to play as him and he's really badass. In the final battle, the Lich King versus the Demon King is really epic. So I recommend this expansion if you never played it. It's one of my favorite PC games of all time. The original Deus Ex is considered one of the best PC games of all time, but there are many people who didn't like the sequel, Invisible War. It was dumbed down for consoles a little bit because the environments were smaller, but it had a lot of features that were better. I'll start with a negative that they unified all the ammo for all guns, which was kind of dumb. The original game had dated graphics even on its release, so with Invisible War we got a Deus Ex game with excellent graphics, and it also had a physics engine that was pretty neat. You could play as either a male or female, and I remember reading before this game came out that playing as a male or female would be different, like when you play as the male he has more strength. I don't think that made it into the final game, but it was cool to have the option to play as a male or female. The male's voice is really boring, so I always play as the female. The game still gave the player a lot of choices, to play as stealth or go in guns blazing. In my opinion, it lived up to the franchise. The biomods were a little easier to manage in the interface, and this was probably because the game was designed for consoles as well. And there's still some cool biomods. So I recommend Deus Ex Invisible War. It might not be the best Deus Ex game, but I really enjoyed it. Half-Life 2 is a game that needs no introduction. Before it came out, I bought it on Steam, and I was waiting on Ventrilo with a couple of my friends from Canada, and then it launched, and it was such an experience to play through. City 17 felt like a real place. It was ominous and scary to be there. But pretty soon, we ran into some friends from the original game. It was cool that this time, Barney isn't just an NPC, and neither is the scientist Dr. Kleiner. 
about that beer I owed you. It's me, Gordon Barney from Black Mesa. Hey. There's no denying that Half-Life 2 was an incredible game. But to me, the highlight of the series was Half-Life 2 Episode 2, which was released in 2007. This time, the story focuses more on Alex. You have to find her father by reaching the White Forest. But she gets injured early in the game, and it's up to you to save her. To save Alex, you have to get the antlion larvae and go through the antlion tunnels. With the help of a Vortigaunt, then you'll be able to save Alex. But then the G-Man crops up again and is extremely Dr. creepy in this game. Freeman. It's still not revealed who the G-Man is or who he's working for. So I'm looking forward to Half-Life 3 to answer those questions. The game really makes you feel for the characters and the ending is one of the few games to make me cry. No spoilers. But yeah, this game, it also had better graphics with the Source Engine because there was more open areas and the poly counts for the models were increased as well. So even though we never got Half-Life 2 Episode 3 or Half-Life 3 yet, Half-Life 2 and its expansion Episode 2 are some of my favorite PC games. First Encounter Assault Recon Fear is a first person shooter released in 2005. This is another game where you can slow time, but the way it was done was awesome and it really reminded me of the Half-Life games in some ways, so I think that's why I enjoyed it so much. Fear is a horror game, but I didn't find it to be that scary. The antagonist, Paxton Fettel, is a creepy bad guy though. This game just has excellent combat and is a blast to play, and one of my favorite PC games of all time. Need for Speed Most Wanted Black Edition is one of my favorite racing games. In my previous video, I mentioned that Need for Speed High Stakes is one of my favorite racing games, and it was similar to that game in that you could lose your car in a blacklist race. The story is presented in FMV cutscenes with in-game backgrounds. And they're kind of corny, but they're really fun and just entertaining. Is this awful show or is there something more I should know about? I'd like to take a little peek under the hood. <laughs> Good idea. In the beginning of the game, rival racers tamper with your vehicle and you lose your BMW in a blacklist race. From then on, it's an open world and you'll have to compete to win your spot at the top again. Need for Speed Most Wanted Black had an excellent story for a racing game, had a great open world, and was just a blast to play. One of my favorite racing games of all time. As I said in my previous video, Morrowind was one of my favorite games of 2002. Its sequel, Oblivion, is one of my favorite games as well. When I saw the 2005 E3 trailer, I was blown away. These graphics were like the next generation, and it had Patrick Stewart from Star Trek. I spent so much time customizing my character, there were so many options. Like all Elder Scrolls games, you'll start in a prison, but after that, you'll decide where to go. Oblivion was more accessible because it guided the player a little bit more than Morrowind did. I have two complaints about Oblivion that bothered me a lot when I first played it. If you steal something, the guards will automatically teleport to you and take you to jail, like they're psychic or something. That wasn't in any of the other Elder Scrolls games. It's all over, lawbreaker. And another thing that bothered me is that the enemies leveled up with you. So you couldn't go to an area and there'd be low level enemies and then another area with high level enemies. And I prefer that classic style like how it was in Morrowind. But there were plenty of mods to fix all that. And Oblivion is an amazing game, one of my favorite PC games of all time. StarCraft 2 was another game I was waiting for for a really long time. It had been 7 years since Blizzard's last RTS, Warcraft 3 The Frozen Throne. And finally StarCraft 2 came out, and it was amazing. To release the game sooner, Blizzard released the game in three sections. Wings of Liberty, which is the Terran campaign, came out in 2010. The expansions would be in my future video, because this video I'm just talking about games from up to 2012. I like how StarCraft 2 introduced the Hyperion as a hub, where you could view missions and talk to other characters. And StarCraft 2 is also kind of non-linear because it would give you the option to select certain missions, and I thought that was really cool. StarCraft 2 is one of my favorite PC games of all time. I waited 8 years for Mafia 2 to come out, 
And when it did, it was amazing. In my opinion, it didn't really live up to the first one. Like, Mafia 1 had way more extra modes, but Mafia 2 was still a great game. The game starts off during World War II, where Vito is in Operation Husky. He gets injured and has to come home. Mafia 2's graphics were a huge step up from the first game. I remember this part right here, when you come home. These set pieces were fantastic. There was all these different characters moving around and windows, and it was really impressive back then. Fist fighting is a bigger part of Mafia 2 than the first game, and you'll get to do some cool combos. Vito's friend Joe is a character, and he introduces him to the Mafia, and helps you get your first car. The driving was a little bit less realistic in Mafia 2 than the first game. But it was cool how you start off in the 1940s and then go to the 50s and the cars change. And I didn't really have a problem with the driving after that. Mafia 2 is one of my favorite PC games of all time. I'm not the biggest indie gamer. I spend a lot on my computer so I want to play the latest AAA games to take advantage of my graphics card. When I saw Bastion at my friend's house, I was so impressed. I really liked the art style and how the narrator talks whenever you do anything. It was just a fun game and it's the shortest game on this list because it's only 3 hours, but I really enjoyed it and it's one of my favorite PC games. A big old fella pops out in front of a kid. I went back to college in 2011, so I actually didn't get to play Deus Ex Human Revolution until probably 2012. But this game, I love the Deus Ex series and I loved this game. What did you mean back there, man? The music was fantastic and this is really my second favorite Deus Ex game, besides the original. And even though it still didn't have as large environments as the original, I think everything else was incredible. Adam Jensen is an awesome, badass character. I love, I love this game, Deus Ex Human Revolution, and it's one of my favorite PC games. I remember that Alan Wake was originally going to come out on PC first and be an exclusive for DirectX 10 and Windows Vista. That didn't happen. Microsoft decided to make it an Xbox exclusive, so I first played it on Xbox 360 in 2010. It didn't even make its way to PC until 2012, but this is a fantastic game. The graphics are incredible, it has an excellent s story which is like sort of like a thriller, like a Stephen King novel. And it's an awesome game, one of my favorite PC games of all time. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed my video. I'd like to know what are your top 10, top 15 PC games of this time period or just in general. And if you like this video, please click like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm doing more videos all the time. And you could also check out my previous video, which was my top games from 1989 to 2002. Thanks again for watching and stay tuned on Coop's Game Shelf.